Let's look a little deeper at CSS syntax and inheritance. Remember, CSS rules govern how the content of the element should be displayed. Here is a CSS rule set. It has body as the selector. It's the element or portion of our page being selected to have the rule applied to. Between the curly braces are all the declarations or property value pairs that will apply the rules to the body. Here we have one declaration stating that the back background color will have the value light blue. Background color is the property name and light blue is the value that is being assigned to the background color. Each declaration has a colon in between the property name and the value and will end in a semicolon. Let's look how we can apply more than one rule set to an HTML page. This time, in addition to the light blue black background on the body, we can see there's even more CSS. The title is centered in blue, and the links look more like a the link looks more like a button. The paragraph text is a little bigger, and the image is sized better for the page. And there are a few other changes as well. This is the external CSS file that has all the rules or rule sets that is affecting the page. The body selector now has a few more declarations within its curly braces. We've given the whole body some padding or space around it and change the font for our page. The H1 is the selector in the next rule set. It has four declarations within, it, within its curly braces. So just the H1 has a different font color. This has a little margin space at the bottom and it's centered. Notice all the property value pairs in each declaration. Color is the property and navy is the value. Font size is the property, and 30px is the value, and so on. Don't worry if you don't understand all the properties and values on this page. You don't need to know them all yet. For example, we'll learn more about units of measurement like px and em later. And we'll learn why some properties here, like font, family, and border, have three values. But for now, just make note of the property names in red and the values for those properties that follow the colon. Also, see how each declaration ends in a semicolon to note the end of each declaration. And the curly bra braces show the set of declarations or the de declaration block that goes with each selector. With CSS, it's good to know that it's working with elements that have invisible boxes around them. Here I have put a red border on every element on the page, so you can see these boxes. CSS allows us to create rules that will control how these boxes and the content of the boxes are presented. Let's look at precedence and inheritance with CSS rules. If there are two or more rules that apply to the same element, it's important to know which one will take precedence. For example, inline overrides embedded and embedded overrides external. So if I had background color rule for the body in all three different locations, a light blue one in line, a green one embedded, and a red one on external, the light blue in line would take precedence. If I only had embedded in external, the embedded would take precedence. We know, however, that you should only use an external CSS file if possible and not use inline and embedded. But what if you also have the rules applied to the same element even within the external CSS file? Here, the first rule set targets the body or has bar body as a selector. But later on, on line 20, bodies perhaps, um, perhaps the developer forgot they already had a selector for body and they've used it again. Both have a declaration of setting the background to different colors. In this case, the rule that comes later will take precedence and the background would be gray. The first declaration of making the background red would be overridden. The second selector takes precedence. In later lessons, we'll see how more specific selectors will get precedence as well. Another important topic to understand is inheritance. Notice how the children elements of the body element like the H1 or the paragraph, will inherit some of the declarations applied to the parent element. 
For example, both the H1 and the paragraph element have a light gray background and are styled with the Georgia font, even though that was specifically declared in the body element rule set. The children are inheriting those declarations. So there we have an introduction of the syntax, um, precedence, and inheritance of CSS.